I'll call the meeting to order the Village Council regular meeting Tuesday, October 10th at 7 p.m. We can please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, could you call the roll, please? Lori Bourgeau. Present. Kelsey Cook. Here. Maureen Helva. Yes. Allison Kemp. Here. Jacob Nicosia. Here. Okay, I think we have um, one modification to the agenda um, under 9D. We'd like to add Halloween trick or treat hours. Other well, maybe dancing and Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> consideration for Halloween. Um, any other um, additions or changes? If no changes, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Support. Motion made by Helmut, seconded by Porcho. Any discussion? Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Um, so next, we have a public hearing on the residential rental inspection ordinance. I will move oh. to open the public hearing at 7.01. Support. Motion made by Cook, by Helmuth. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Public hearing, any nay? Motion carries. Public hearing's now open. Oh, let's see here. All right, I'm just going to kind of go over, for purposes of the public hearing, I'll just briefly recap what we're looking at. So we have a database of registered residential properties pursuant to our registration ordinance and so now council is considering a rental inspection ordinance and includes um, costs and we recoup mostly by the homeowners and then particular things that we would be looking for to inspect the rental properties um, is there any public comment on the rental inspection Seeing none, and I don't believe we received any correspondence or anything otherwise. So, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion. Thank you. Seven two. Okay. Support. Okay. Motion made by Thomas, seconded by Borjo. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Motion carries. Okay. Next is item six. Call to the public. Um, is there anyone who wishes to announce council under public comment at this time? Seeing none, move on to the consent agenda 7A. I'll make a motion to, to receive and file consent agenda items A1 and 2. Support. Okay, motion made by Helmo, seconded by for show. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Motion carries. And 7B. I'm going to try it. I will make a motion to approve consent agenda 7B, 1, 2, and 3, including paying the bills of $340.38. Support. Perfect. Thank you. Bye. Bourgeois. Second. Bye. Bourgeois. Second. Bye. Second. Bye. Second. Bye. Second. Bye. Second. Bye. Second. Bye. Second. Cool. Yes. Motion carries. Great. Um, item eight, unfinished old business. First up is the residential inspection ordinance second reading. Mr. Davis, is there any updates that you want to provide on this? Uh, council, I issued a memo October 2nd, 2023, which uh, is likely in your packet. Um, okay. It was the most recent version of the ordinance. Set for today for a second reading. The scope of the inspection is, I think, clearly defined under this version. The frequency of the inspection process is defined. We link the fees to the village schedule of fees so the ordinance doesn't require amendment in the future when fees rise or lower. And the legal concerns that have been raised in the past about unauthorized entries are addressed in the ordinance to ensure legal compliance. Um, with the case law that had developed on that issue. 
So the ordinance is before you. You've had lots of opportunities to look at this and it's before you for a second reading. Mr. Mandor, do you want to add anything? No, I don't think so, but it's been pretty much. Uh, again, I didn't have the memo in from our July meeting last month when we talked about it. About so I, I just put the theme in the back in just to refresh it with memory about the McKenna cost. And this was the cost that I rolled forward at that time, the $200 ten and that was just a follow up, just for information. Okay, thank you. What's the ordinance number? 418. Thank you. All right, is there a motion from council? Um, do you want to make a motion or can I um, do a comment first? Um, either way, you can put a motion on the table and then have discussion or if you have questions or comments now, it's fine. Yeah, I, I still, I have my concerns about it. As it is, I feel like it's more punitive, um, more overreach, and less about health and safety. Um, I also and I'm not in favor of forcing um, the government into the homes every three years. Um, I would prefer it to be more of a situation where, say, um, landlords were required to, at times of tenant change, either supply the new tenant with their completed inspection from within the past three years, or a pamphlet that we um, have landlords provide to tenants, explaining that tenants can come to the village and request an inspection, request the records for that home of the inspection that the land um, that the landlords would be requested or required to submit with us. Not that it would be absolutely required, but it would put that power into the tenant's home when they're getting into it or into the landlord's hands to do it in between times of tenant change. Um, so I, I like the idea of doing something for health and safety. Um, my main concern is electric. It's, it's not punitive um, and it, it, it wouldn't be necessarily, you know, paint kind of things and that it would be, is your electric functioning properly um, and yeah so like if your electric if an inspection zone and your electric is good but your amperage isn't quite high enough then we're not forcing that landlord to change it unless there are problems with it um, so I mean that's I think that's pretty sorry I didn't know it's a lot. no that's okay thank you I completely disagree that this is an health and safety. Um, no, I, I, yeah, I think it is. It's just, I think it's that anymore. Okay. Are I'll you make a motion to adapt ordinance 418, Article 5, Section 10. Support. Okay, motion made by Helmut, seconded by Kemp. Any discussion? I did want to discuss, it came up last time, um, what happens when, if, if an yeah. occupant was to erroneously report an expert inspection. Um, I looked at a couple other ordinances that had if it was if it was done erroneously and the inspector comes out and they're very clearly within like everything's up to code that the complaint the complaint would be the one responsible for the cost um, i don't know i think that was something we discussed last time but we didn't really come up with a conclusion on if everyone wanted to can you i'm sorry repeat it one more time like if someone was erroneously reporting and they, they were doing so to be malicious and very retaliate against the landlord, mm -hmm. and if an inspector came out and found nothing wrong with the home, that the complaint, the complaint, the person making the complaint would be responsible for the cost. Okay. Um, would you charge them up like a civil infraction or something? I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what. 
think the way we collect it will be look like this, obviously, is if someone didn't pay the lien on the house. Mm -hmm. and so, um, I'm not sure how that out. would, and that was a question I was going to ask Bob because I'm not well, the way we go about doing that. The way, the way we left it is on page four, section 10 107 fees B. So if we have an inspection as initiated by a complaint or other condition and a violation is found to exist, then the fee is charged. Um, if no violation is found, then there wouldn't be a fee. I think you would have problems from a jurisdiction standpoint, then reaching out across town to whoever filed a complaint and try to impose a fee on them. I think that would be legally difficult. It could be something. And I can see that being could be murky. somebody who's not even in the middle. Well, and I can see that being very murky. And yeah, that we get into some great. So, and it could be somebody who's not even in the village who made the complaint, and then I don't see how you reach out and get jurisdiction to make them pay. I, I believe it was Kelsey's point. Yeah, I can see your responding. To, cause, yeah, my concern was if if there's no fee, if no violations found, you're still doing the work, so someone has to pay for that, and so it'd be. Everybody we, would be charged. We, we, the pool of the, the whole program would have to pay for it. Right. So the residents of the village of Boxes Group would pay for it. Yes. But yeah, that you see. Okay, case. sorry. That was my very complicated way of getting to that point. No, oh, I, I, I apologize. You. But um, <laughs> we got there. Um, all right. I don't have a problem with the village absorbing it. I think that's it's a public health and safety issue. There's other issues like the water, replacing the water lines, the leaves of the homes, those only affect those residents too. Right. And there's lots of things that we do that only affect a segment of our This would probably so, be semi-rare. And I do think it would be extremely rare circumstance. And I think it would only happen a couple times and the bill would get down to the fact Oh, this this tenant doesn't like their landlord, or or somebody doesn't like them. Right. Gotcha. I'd like. I think I'd like to say something. I think <clears throat> we're really struggling with this. I think because I'm trying to put myself in the in the place of um, you know the renter, mm -hmm. and ultimately what, what they would want. And I the the problem that I see is that. The cost and the money for the inspection has to come from somewhere, right? So the question then becomes is, is it gonna be tax revenue paying for that versus the individual business owner? And the individual business owner is going to pass that cost on to uh, the renter, right? So ultimately, we, at bare minimum, are driving the cost of rent a little bit, which I think is, also exactly the opposite of what we want to do. We also want to, um, you know, enforce um, life safety um, requirements, I think, for, for renters and in, in, in making sure that they have a safe place to rent. Um, so this is, this is one I think that for me, um, it's really hard to vote, vote on and, and create laws around this because we want to make sure that we respect the privacy of people. And then we also want to make sure that we address the safety concerns. Um, the question that I really have is, do we need a law or an ordinance to actually get that done, or can it be done in a different way and achieve the same results? Well, um, we have a couple of chiefs out there, one retired and one active and a police chief. So I think nothing, per, you know, short of it, if you didn't have this ordinance and a, a tenant had an issue with a space they were renting and believed that um, the electrical system was severely flawed, they can still report that to the village. And the village can take action on an on a issue like that in terms of you know going to look at it. So it's we're not there is a remedy there. That, if that was your question, it's, uh, it's not formalized in an inspection process, but tenants are always free to come to the village and, and potentially raise a complaint about something. Now, a lot of times that we would have to tell them that's a civil problem. You need to work it out with your landlord. But if they're reporting something that is along what you're saying is a, is a, is a 
really health and safety issue that you know could start a fire the next day. But I think our our, our safety people would react. But yep. that would also require the resident to have the expertise to know that this panel yes. was recalled in the and, 80s. Yes, and it, and and it places. To be expected. Right. The and average, you know, that's. No, and, and, <laughs> and, and, but the, and it also places pressure on a tenant to take an affirmative act against the landlord, and sometimes that doesn't work out real well. And if and they're a marginalized group, it's hard to. It's uncomfortable. And, yes. and so, but the answer to your question that you were asking is, you know, that, that, that potential remedy on fire and safety issues always exist. So I have. And isn't there, I, I think I've said this before, and I'll just ask you about for clarification under like uh, Michigan landlord tenant law, uh, tenant can withhold rent if, uh, you know, for repairs to be made to make sure that they're not being. It's dicey, but, but you know. There's big issues. Yeah, I mean, you, you can still face an eviction for non payment, but you can, it gives you a forum to raise these issues. Yeah. So you have to put the money in an escrow account. You have to put your rent in an escrow account. You have to prove that you put that rent in the escrow account. Right. A separate account from your regular account. It's crazy. Yeah, it's a little it's a little murky, but it, it ultimately when you end up in an eviction process, you get a chance to raise those issues. You know, so at some point, why didn't you pay your rent? Well, because the heat doesn't work. Yeah, it's a good defense. Right. Mr. Redmond. So that similar, almost exact situation we've gone through over small apartments in the east northeast part of the town, uh, the complex multiple units. Uh, they had some water leaking issues, <clears throat> upstairs apartment, downstairs apartment. Uh, our code officer reached out to the management company south of here, 20 miles or so, I think. I'm not sure if it was Rochester or what. But, um, they did best to show up, make some repairs. One of the tenants called me one of them last week. They made repairs. They put like they stacked three wax rings in the toilet trying to stop the toilet from leaking. They figured that's what was happening. So I, I basically, she recalled seeing the stuff that I sent out over time to everybody about the renters' rights and stuff like that. I resent that stuff to her. Went over the same thing with her, like the uh, council person how much just said she would have to set separate account, pay her rent into that account, not to say, oh, I have it. You know, you have to. So I looked at the, and I told her, I said, I'm not giving you that exact advice. This is all spelled out in what I've sent you. Mm -hmm. But if you look in there, you'll see those remedies that you have through the, step, through the legislature are in there. So I sent them to her. She was kind of in that realm of trying to get over that home. Mm -hmm. okay. Any discussion, Kelly? I mean, I, all of you heard me speak at nauseam. I, I like that we've kept it paired to the life and safety issues. I think no one here wants, you know, what to be policing paint color and paint chipped paint and carpets and whatnot. Um, I'm happy with the list we have. I, it's significantly less restrictive than the pier or Waterford or other ordinances we've looked at who have significantly longer lists. Um, I, there's units that no one has looked at years and years and years so i think it it would be a good idea just to have eyes or no, let me rephrase that for someone to go in looking for safety issues at a minimum in july 1993 i only know that because i was nine and a half months pregnant I went to district court to testify on behalf in a landlord dispute. Then our police officer went to a call, realized there were no smoke alarms, and happened to mention it to someone at the village, who went and did an inspection. We ended up in court, and the judge basically said to the tenant, why don't you step outside and read the landlord of the neighborhood. I mean, he was taking advantage of woman left and right. That apartment is supposed to not, I don't believe they've ever done any work on it. It should still be vacant, but I'm sure there's something limited in it. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind, we just have to get a baseline going so that no one dies. So everybody has smoke alarms. Somebody has 
a GFI in their calendar and is it going to get electrocuted making popcorn? Yes, I, I believe that if you're paying for a service and the rates have gone up exponentially for rent, then you have an expectation of a minimum level of safety, just like you would entering any other business. I agree. I think that there's better use of our time and funds, though. I think that this is an issue for every property, not just rentals. And so we could do a lot of public education throughout the community about making detectors and smoke detectors and things, you know, carbon monoxide detectors and things we should look at and railings. And so personally, that's where I'd like to focus our efforts rather than on this. I think that's something we can do also on top of this. But I think this is important. Mm -hmm. Thank you. About overreach and unnecessary for the majority of things, and and I, and I do believe communication is a big step, and um, we need to find a way to communicate um, things better, and we're taking steps towards that. I really like the registration, um, I like uh, with that the building box that that's starting with, um, and I think that we can do more of by communicating with our residents, letting them know options that are available to them, making them more easily accessible um, without forcing our way into every single rental home, every single three years. Um, just, just, nobody comes into my house every three years. So wouldn't want it whether I was renting only or whatever it is. But again, it's a business. How often do you go into a business? I know. Yeah. You do those annually, right? Business inspections. And this is a business. You don't do, how often do you business inspections? A residence is not a business. A rental is. They're making money off their property. It's, no. I don't have any kind of the public at this time. Okay. Like, until we get some of the public comment, I get to hear from, you know, our chief of the talk, so. Any other discussion from council? Okay, let's do a roll call vote. Alvin? Yes. Kim? Yes. Nicosia? No. Orjo? No. Cook? No. Okay, we'll move on to ordinance 420, second reading of the mobile food establishment ordinance. <clears throat> So, Council, I, in the packet is the ordinance. I left a lot of the markups over the last several iterations out. I only highlighted issues that we're trying to address what we dealt with at last meeting. Trying to encapsulate those. There was a couple of them I still didn't have any solid information on, but um, you see at the top of the section one about having the uh, permission, and I kind of made the differentiation between on public property, property versus private property. Um, so special event applications are required for on village owned property, which is public property. And I spelled out what that property includes, um, streets, parks, and parking lots. I know I left out one of them, Bob reminded me, and it was parks or parking lots. Mm -hmm. um, under that same section, J1 waste containers, um, Maureen mentioned about not being able to be sold into a dumpster owned by others. Mm -hmm. And then the hours of operation, I think we kind of talked about that. And, less, and I added something on the bottom there about the 72 hour limit. But I put, unless it was approved, it had been given as part of a special event. So let's say they came to us and it was a special event going on in town, it was a four or five day event, and that was given, of course, and then that would cover them for an additional time frame. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, There was one other part. The, the one part I, we discussed last time was about, and it was kind of similar to the hours, about, after I reread it, they didn't think we needed to tweak it, and that is about, um, staging the food outside of the unit. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then for G of section one on, on the first page, basically. Uh, food shall not be prepared, sold, or displayed outside the local food establishment. 
at first I thought, and we talked about that, well, put some time frame that maybe they could stack it outside, but I think the feeling when we discussed it was they really don't want it stored outside, with that, you know, they can leave everything inside, versus putting some kind of time frame that it could sit outside. That's the part that I thought, well, after we read, I reread it, I thought it's pretty straightforward the way it is. Actually, with H also, um, about supplies being stored within the multiple food establishment or maybe adjacent to the food establishment in an enclosed container. Um, we were, I was looking at maybe put some kind of time frame on there. But I didn't really think it was necessary the more I read it, but I'll let you guys do the final judge of that. All these changes look um, really good to me. One thing that I'll bring up to council that was um, brought to my attention in between meetings was just that some of our local businesses who might have their patios or live music going on, and there's a food truck parked there, depending on the location of how they're parked, the generator's really loud, and so there's a business where there are patrons on the patio, live music, and they can't even hear it because of the overpowering noise of the generator. And I don't know if all trucks are as loud as others or if situation was like an external generator. I assume the generator is enclosed within the truck, but I don't know how, I guess I haven't looked down that quite closely. But I'm wondering if we should, if we should address, I mean, if we're going to address that, it seems like this would be the appropriate place to do it. And if, if there's, you know, maybe it's something as easy as if there's a way to position the truck to cause the least, you know, awfully intrusive <laughs> disturbance to local business with outdoor patrons, and that's the way they park, and they'll just something. Uh, a generator would have to be outside, correct? Yeah. It, so those trucks that would have generators would be outside of the, I didn't know if it was like the truck itself causing a lot of noise, or if it's like it's the, generator. the generator behind it. So maybe it's a matter of just placing a generator on the side of the truck that's furthest away from like an outdoor dining area that's not the food truck. That's just something that our, that's happened particularly at a couple of places um, in the Northeast Quad, I think. Yeah. If I could expound on that a little bit. And yes, I do recall last year or the year before, um, I did hear from a couple of patrons who had been sitting out that behind Red Naps in that outdoor seating area. And the, you know, they were out there enjoying dinner, and all they could hear was 100 foot away with the generator behind Grab Temple where the food truck was. Um, and even if it wasn't making more they couldn't discuss, I think it was at the minimum annoying to them. Yeah. Um, and most food trucks will have a generator on them, right? To run the refrigeration and things like that. Okay. The more, the quieter ones are expensive. Okay. Sure. So people use a lot for one, they want to spend a thousand dollars, they don't want to spend twenty five hundred on one. Mm -hmm. And you get what you kind of be paid for. They'll both work, but the cheaper ones are louder. Okay. And strokes are and they, they create a fair amount of noise. And they're typically mounted in maybe some kind of a frame around them, but they can't be totally enclosed because of the engine and yeah. stuff. But so there's there's no way to totally get away from it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm gonna throw out consideration something to add if we can, so that's a good point. I hadn't thought of it yet. Um is it something where we can uh, ask Bob to look into seeing if there's something we could add to it and re consider the second reading next month? So this would probably go in section one. I, I would generally think it would probably be somewhere between M and N on page, uh, on the third page, I think, right? somewhere in that area where we have wheel chalk, sewer, water, fire code, just like something about noise. Um, and I don't think we should link it just to the generator. We should somehow address noise as an issue. Mm -hmm. And I can look for language with Joe on that. It's a good point. If you are looking at that, will you look at something to... Just for you, I like But just thanks, Bob. For, um, <laughs> to minimize exhaust fumes and the oh you know interesting if it's, yeah. people are eating right there if they're no, it's a really good point minimize that the noise one like get away from the noise one is, is interesting because I, I really think it's going to come down to you know where the food truck is and i don't know i don't know if there's a noise capturing device for a food truck and a generator 
would be very difficult to create a housing on a food truck to curtail the noise of a generator. Mm -hmm. That's really subjective. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's right. That's, that's very right. hard to police. I mean, right. if you park it in such a way that it's right next to a wall, it might be louder than if you had parked it right next to that right. table. So I, it's just something to just be, you, you might not be able to Solve it. Exactly. Yeah. But you can put something in there about consider, you know, just to kind of throw it in there. So if we find out some truck is consistently we're getting complaints about them being noisy, we can put it right here in the ordinance that it Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Just if so say a truck is parked outside home grow and they have like music and patio and all they'd have to do is just flip around the other way. Make a best effort. Or you know, park down a couple, you know, obviously it's right. not it's not nice, but or just moving over ten feet would help like if there's complaints that's called in and that can be done, it would be nice if they did it. But again, I don't want to cause more problems than it's worth, but just the thing with the idea. Um, so we, these technically they get approved by the fire department. And is there, do you guys keep records of, say, like if we got a complaint about a certain truck over and over? Okay. Um, is there something where we can maybe administratively? Yeah. Yes, Jeff? Yeah. <laughs> so, one of the things we don't want to do to is that it's hard enough with police now when we get a noise complaint. Yeah. Parking dogs are pretty easy then they take the dog inside or whatever, but you know, people sitting on the back porch visiting too loud the neighbors, of course, those complaints are so hard to tell what's what's the truth of you is not to the people talking. Mm -hmm. And you, when you get into having decibel meters and things like that, then they're, they're thrown into my uh, calibrate that thing, you have to have training on that thing, that you know, flight first flight, or if I recall right, Chief. So that's tough. Yeah. Perhaps what you could do is if there was a certain truck, again, some trucks have nice quiet ones. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, you get 10 foot away and you your generator. And they can run on propane, run off the tank, or they can run on gasoline, some of the gasoline ones. They make, they, I've seen them where they pull them right off the truck and put them 20 feet away, you know, and then they run, put it back on the truck when they leave. If there was one that was generating some issues, complaints, perhaps we would have to go to that particular truck and say, your truck in this particular area, the downtown, whatever, is too loud until you, you need to come back with a quiet generator. You may have to take a permit for both. I don't know. I hate to get to that point, but because it's one of those rural gray areas. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I should clarify more. I wasn't even necessarily thinking the noise idea. It's just general kind of complaints. Let's say a certain truck every time they come out, their employees are rude to everybody around them, you know, or, or, or there's just business complaints that we have about a business that's not in our village, but they come <coughs> from our village. And I, I don't want to put too much administrative work on in any way. I don't think we would get many things like this, but if, if there were something where we would would keep some sort of records on who we've given approvals to and if we're getting a consistent record of. So the way we tweaked, I tweaked, and I think we're all on the same page with our ordinance, with the fire department is the one who does the inspections and the one who do the approval. Mm -hmm. When it comes to enforcing the ordinance as far as parking and lane, block and lane stuff, that I took that upon us. I think I'd better suit it in the village for the police to handle that. Because they they're there patrolling constantly they get their complaint. Keep, we don't want the firemen to be out there trying to tell us you got to move, you know, eight feet. We have officers for that. And so those complaints would probably come to us because they're coming from a neighboring resident or neighboring business or even somebody just that went to the, uh, if they're rude, they just lose business, so we're not worried about that. Mm -hmm. But I think those complaints we will be aware of. Mm -hmm. so, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, when we're called to somebody to call for service number, so we're, we're always going to get an attachment and a number for that call, so we will have a record of that. So, and if there's something that's uh, an abundance of trouble, then I will obviously have a chat with Joe. So, the, the life safety issue, so to speak, is, is the, the fire department doing those inspections, initial inspections, so to them, then those will prove the functionality and the safety of the rig, and then it's 
get out of our community, and then those complaints will be more so on us, I think, to handle versus the fire department, and we'll be fully aware of them. Okay, for our, it could be someone that sits out there in the subdivision, like Moe's up there, and they're sitting out there on all day on a Saturday, and the people next door are just out of the they run for eight hours on paradise, and they're complaining because they hear the generators. It may not be obnoxious, but if the, the neighbors are just over it, so to speak. And so those are all potential <coughs> We're getting too far in the weeds, Bob. Or no, I mean, I, you know, I'm just wondering: Are we looking for a reasonable efforts clause where we just that's what I'm thinking. Say each uh, mobile food establishment shall take all reasonable steps as necessary <coughs> to minimize <coughs> the level and direction of noise generated by the operations and um, and and their um, exhaust you know, something of that nature where we just have them on notice, you know, do your best to position yourself so that, you know, you're not directing noise at others. I can fashion that word. Um, it, it's, you know, it's that, it's that guy in law school, the reasonable man I could never find mm -hmm. in, the, in my classroom. Um, you remember that guy? I do. Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, the reasonable standard is very subjective. One of the most difficult things the police chief Faces as a ordinance that says, you know, somebody needs to behave reasonably. Um, it's, it's a tough one, but we could we could fashion something. We think that if it's in there, it's better than that being in there. Right? Better than that. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally how, how do we deal with complaints in that? So, all the red, we, we have a food truck in the village somewhere, and all the residences or businesses near. They have a, they have a problem and, and call and complain. Would it be, if we don't have something in here, how do we, do we have a clause that, the reasonable clause that we could somehow build in there for that? Because I, I, I see mean, that as really probably being the, don't we, do we the approve, check. Mm, do we approve their position when they submit a physical position? Yeah, where they're going to be. It talks about not blocking lanes and not blocking pedestrian crossing and things like that. But, but can we, can we, in our approval process, sort of forecast where a mobile unit would have noise impact on so there's, and others, there, there's, and, and not grant that location? There's two elements here. A private property, open house, up on Dade Street, right? What you want. They're, they're, they're not gonna be in the street, they're gonna pull in your side yard, your driveway, your backyard, yeah. whatever, and that's, we're, we're almost out of the woods on that one. If it's on, Public property, well, they have to come to us for a special event application unless we change the guidelines for our special event application. Because then our special event application guidelines, food trucks and things like that are <coughs> one of the things that trigger special event application. So they wouldn't end up on our public street, probably parking lot or road parks without first coming to us getting a special event application. So we can control the back by property. saying yes or no where they go. But if they're on the 10 feet, that's private property behind a particular restaurant downtown that goes in the parking lot slightly into the ground that that's private property. Mm -hmm. So you know the neighboring property ends at the building, so everything behind that property is public. Because the way the lines jog quite a bit. So mm -hmm. um, but so, on private property is again uh, it's So I, I'm assuming that we're imagining that most of those complaints are coming from that northeast quadrant. Mm -hmm. But that is private property anyway, so that wouldn't. Right. The, the, I, yeah. I don't want to get into you know the neighbors don't like it. That like what they get like three strikes like that seems very. Yeah, we have to be careful on being that arbiter. Yeah. Um, I think subjective. I think we should just put in a reasonable effort clause yeah. to reasonably control your noise and reasonably control your exhaust. It's I don't know, you know, unless you want to go, you know, and and shall adhere to any directive of the police department. I don't know if I want to put that on them. You know, that's too much power, don't you? Um, <laughs> too much burden. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, I, I mean, I, I I think we can control this from a public land standpoint. Yes. We just we can just make predeterminations it's not going there because that impacts too many people right and technically speaking we have other ordinances that could come into play if it's on private property right we have noise ordinances right which is more subjective 
So, mm -hmm. reasonable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like the I like the reasonable, you know, what you're talking about the reasonable clause, and then really when it comes down to our businesses, we, we can always go to the DBA and be like, mm -hmm. hey, yeah, we, that business has that one private spot where they put the trucks, but you know, we're hearing maybe if they went to this public area, twenty feet out, maybe it would work better, and you know, we can always handle it in house. So, yeah. I like it. So we would postpone. We would just adjourn the second reading or set over until the next meeting. The second reading pending a, um, a um, reasonable effort noise and exhaust. I make a motion that we do the opposite. <laughs> that is very messy. I've been saying the rest of the meeting. <laughs> Look, looking back ten years, that'll be twelve minutes. <laughs> Okay, we'll just make quick we're Joe. We all know what you mean. Second to help. <laughs> Any further discussion? So we're going to be reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Is there a third roll call? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thanks. Okay, purchasing the consideration. Hey, Mr. Davis, it's a nice memo there for you. My goal, what I said, I think, probably to Kelsey and Bob, we could go was to focus on what the perfect one rather than trying to tackle anything else in order so we could just narrowly address something and Bob's got something to share. Yeah. So on the when when we're looking at the just the lo local preference uh, provision, we, we had some good dialogue on that about what it does and what it leaves on the table and what it what it does positively and what some of the negatives are. So in my research and in my interviews with other folks who have dealt with this issue, um, I ended up back at the charter, and I, you know, you you don't want to drift too far from the, the, the foundations of your charter. And your charter requires an award to the lowest responsible bidder. That's a general override in your charter. So I then look for language that other people have tried to do that's, that keeps you on the lowest responsible bidder, but still gets a local preference. And the way they accomplish that is different than what we're doing right now. What, what, what it, the way we accomplish it is, in the language I suggested, is that um, if, if a person um, located in the village, for example, is um, $2,700 higher than the lowest responsible bid, we give that person the right to match the lowest responsible bid and therefore be the lowest bidder. That would be the local preference. So we're not leaving any money on the table. We're not taking the $2,700 debt. We're making, we're giving an opportunity for our local preference to meet the lowest bid. And um, that has worked in other communities. I found uh, several communities of your size um, that we're working on that concept as opposed to the money issue where, you know, the, because 63 is within five of the 60, the, the, the village eats the three grand and, and goes with the, um, you know, it goes with the other, um, allows the other bit to get lower. So, um, quite frankly, I think the way it's, worded in your ordinance right now it could be construed to be contrary to the charter and I'd rather see I'd rather see a result that keeps you locked to the lowest responsible bid. And remember in your purchasing ordinance right now you have at least um, A through J criteria that helps you establish who is the lowest responsible bidder, ranging from skill to quality of past work, you know, financial resources, um, you know, the other conditions that are attached to the bid. So you, you have a lot of room to determine who is the lowest responsible bidder. And then without changing the criteria, you just allow a local preference for somebody to become that 
if they're within a certain range, but they have to meet the lowest responsible bid. So you leave no money on the table. But they have to be within a certain range to even be considered right. that in the first place. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this came up when we had, you know, when we awarded a contract recently to a local, even though they were more. So we, so we paid more just because they were local. And so I like the idea of getting rid of the local preference. I think Bob, your suggestion for the blended preference where the <coughs> local can then do the work for that the lowest bidder provided. I still don't love that though because I feel like then if I was, you know, the local business can just bid whatever and know that if they get underbid, they can always just come down and match that and get the job. Well, they have to be within a range. Still within a range. Right. So, so they're going to just be calculating. Yeah, it's meant it's meant to do Cross this. The fingers. It's meant to do. Okay. You know, you two, you two are. You know, one lives in one is in the village, one is in one's at sixty. And one's at sixty three four. Okay. So so the one that's at sixty three four is from the village, and they're within five of the responsible lowest five percent right? or or a certain percent yeah five percent. So because they're within that five percent, they get an opportunity. They don't have to do it. Right. But we ask them, are you willing to do the work as prescribed for the sixty? And if they say yes, then we be they become the lowest responsible bidder. Another reason I don't like it is because there's always like extra costs on projects. And so, you know, yeah. they bid the project for a certain reason because that's how much it's going to cost them to do it. So I found a lot of the time, not village, but just another work that, you know, they're still going to end up, you're still going to end up paying the higher amount. So I would rather just go with who truly is the lowest bidder and exclude the local preference mm -hmm. altogether. Yeah, that's an option. So many thoughts. <laughs> so many scrambled thoughts. Uh, quite often, we'll use a contractor, like we'll ask Don, who do you want to use to do these water services? And he'll get three beds. And we we're lucky. We have a good contractor that we've worked with a lot. They do good work. And that's Don's preference. I'm not going to swear they're always the lowest bidder. I'm not going to say remember that, but we go with the recommendation of our department heads. Well, Don selects the lowest responsible bidder, and what two you name three of the factors in your conversation that are in your list of considerations: prior work, responsible service in the past, um, knowledge of the worker. So those are all things that you're already free to consider. Um, so you're right. Don may not end up with the lowest right. financial number, but he ends up with the lowest responsible number. And I think responsibility is, I think that's subjective. Um, I think every time we let a contract, it's always subjective. There is, there is always going to be a little bit of subjectivity in the analysis because you're building in factors that get you to the term responsible bidder. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to look at it from the flip side, though. If, if you just went with the number, it, if you're the lowest number, that's it, no further analysis. You're never going to be quite sure what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. If I could, and specifically, uh, use an example or follow up on the example of the water lines. Um, we did put it out the bid the first year. Even though it wasn't a little bit, the next year we put it out again, and uh, another company came in just slightly above them, but they still were the lowest bidder. At that time, after two years of working with them, and realizing a that's two years in a row they were a little bit, and then the great responsible work that they did and the feedback from the residents of how they really were uh, nice, nice to work with, schedule worked well, clean, tidy, they just nothing but good remarks going. Um, that's when we came to them. Let, let's just single source this for the next year and go right with them because they've been low bid two years in a row and it, we got great feedback. So we kind of built that rapport, I think, was part of it too. But again, if they were a little bitter and then it was a disaster, 
the next year, if they were still a little better, and the other ones a hundred more cost, I, I would have to go with the higher one just because of the, it's not worth the, if it's a disaster with the residents. So do you think this purchase policy uh, would allow them to bid it twice, have great people two years in a row, so we don't bother bidding it the third time, we just go with them? Not as currently written, um, but you are allowed to go with preferred services and, and extend existing contracts. Yeah, so that's, that's what we did. We, we, did we didn't go this year. We, we just extended the contract in Joe's right. scenario. We didn't like start over. We extended an existing mm -hmm. service arrangement. So um, it, it, it's like, like with fire departments and with water facilities, sometimes um, you can go out for a bid on a valve, but your whole water system is made by this company and they're the only one who makes the real replacement valve. You guys kind of know what I'm talking about. And so you waive competitive entirely because it's a, it's a single source out there and that's lawful to do that. So you get compatible parts going forward with your water or your, your truck source or, or, or things that so we have to, we're working on the, um, I made some changes to your ordinance and put it in here. I, you can see the red lighting that I started. I will, I will send it to you in color. Yeah. I didn't figure out how to do that. Does it do that for you? Or we, we, I, need a, I need like a teenager in my office <laughs> to uh, help me with these things. I think it came in color for you, but then by the time we scan a PDF, they didn't yeah. scan it. So we're working on that and we're trying to build in some of those things. Um, there's been a lot of challenges lately, Mo, on you know, that you don't have to bid professional services. But then the question is, is well, what is a professional service? And everybody thinks they're a professional service. But the, the field on that, I think, is generally kind of limited. Um, and the, the question arises legally is whether your auditing folks are professional services. That's what's come in for lately. And some think it is a professional service, but some think it's, it's not a professional service. Um, engineering, legal, um, assessing, those kinds of categories. So we're trying to address that in the ordinance at large, but tonight we're gonna to focus on local preferences and, and maybe one clean way to do it is just not to have it so that was, Bob gave you the three options. One was to leave the section. Option two was a little different than had set dollar values, and option three was within a certain range, have them come down and meet. So, with the way, let's say the third one, this is the way we have it right now. It's absolutely required. If it's within this certain dollar amount, you have to take the yeah, local. It's a shell. It's a shell. If, with the way this is, is it absolutely required that we have to give the local one the ability to match? And you give them the right to do it, but they don't have to do it. Don't, do and, we and you have to offer Yes, you have to offer it. They still have to qualify the responsible there. Do we have to accept it? Yes. If they choose that. Yeah, if they choose it and if they, if they want to make one change to the scope in order to make that concession, then you don't have to accept it. I like the idea of making it so that legally, if we have a reason for feeling like that local company is the one we have the experience with, we have, you know, our, our DPW feels that they are, you know, from, for, for good reason, that they would be the one we want versus a company we've never heard of that's coming in with their little lower. But I don't like the idea that instead of using our best judgment, we're required to go with the. So I, I don't well, know. Well, under, under, both, under both scenarios, you can only turn to the local person if they are otherwise a responsible bidder. So it's, it's still a subjective standard. You still have your built in analysis there. So, so the example again, you have somebody local bids 63, 
somebody on the other side of the state bids 60. Mm -hmm. We're gonna give this person, if, if they are otherwise determined you know, to be a, 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 a responsible bidder, the right to match the 60 with no changes to the underlying scope of work. And if they do, we have to take them. And if they do want to do that, then you do take them, but you've already analyzed them subjectively in the, in the realm of being a responsible uh, bidder. Okay. Do you want a motion on which direction, or do you want just kind of a consensus from council? Well, we're, we're, looking to, we're looking right now to, to um, get this issue mm -hmm. uh, behind us so that we can turn to the balance of the purchasing ordinance right. and get the whole thing to you. Mm -hmm. we're, we're working on the numbers and the levels and, and the other, other things. Okay. Um, I don't know if everyone else agrees with me, but I still kind of... I'm just not sure if I feel like the dollar amounts for township and village Probably a little bit, but I guess I think some of these are pretty large. Those are arbitrary numbers in there, so they were just placeholders. Yep. I was um, thinking when we get to it, I was thinking yeah. maybe a little closer yeah. number. I would propose that we just remove it. Yeah. Is anybody thinking otherwise? Do we want, does anybody think that? Just not have a section on for little numbers. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would go with either remove it or have it be a fairly low number. You know, they would have preference by a fairly low number. I, I think ideal, you know, in an ideal world, we would go with a local company. However, we have a responsibility to the taxpayer um, to do the best with the uh, funds we have, and we have a lot of infrastructure that we need to fix. And I think this last project that we were discussing, it was twelve thousand um, dollars. We could have gone with the, you know, a different bidder, and that's twelve thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Could be used towards a crosswalk. A crosswalk. <laughs> <laughs> we, and we just have a lot to do to catch up with our aging infrastructure. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and my point was for the ones we have coming next year, we're planning on, you know, with the, with the one section of the Hudson Park of our parking lot. Um, more than likely, Birmingham, so or BSI Pavings will be bidding on that. They're local in the township. The other work we're doing on Park Street with the water mains and all that stuff, I don't see anybody. Perhaps Sarah Dan just outside of town could bid on that if they're if they're not already too busy. Mm -hmm. uh, do we get a lot of out of town bids on that? I mean, pretty small chance we'll get anybody within the local, other than maybe one option for that water game work. You know, do we get ten of them from mm -hmm. throughout the region? But the parking lot is something that you will have some local people involved with. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, uh, I'll say something. Um, I think my preference actually is to, if we can keep the, the money locally, 100% that is my preference, and I think that's probably all our preferences. Uh, the budget hawk in me, however, says that we need, we have a lot of work <coughs> over the next couple of years here. So I think the way that I'm leaning, and because others have stated this, is that since it sounds like everybody wants to go either, um, the local preference with like within uh, 0.05% or whatever, or just get rid of it completely and be my, my two options. Well, um, one, one, of the, <clears throat> one of the things, another compromise, is that in your list of how you determine who is a um, responsible bidder, is you can add a criteria of um, local presence. Um, and reputation within the community, some language like that. So it's something that you could consider as you're trying to determine in the first instance who it is a responsible better. Right. You could add that a little bit. I've got a little bit. I, yeah, I saw that one. I have, I have number C, the character, yeah. integrity, reputation, judgment, experience, and efficiency of the bidder. You know, I could add comma and their local presence in the community something like that, that, that so now it's a factor you're allowed to consider like, in the first instance 
Is there a legal risk to that? I just always think of the like marijuana ordinances where yeah, the communities saying, were well, like, you, oh, tell you, us what you can do for us. Tell us how much you gave last year. And they all got sued. So well, you tried to, you, you tried to have that criteria where it was how much money did you give to the community last year? Mm -hmm. The court had a problem with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I think your lo local presence and other projects in the local area is within your section. Right. Valid. Yeah. Yeah, it's a valid consideration. Why well, would think that would be valid is because of the mobilization fees that we have. Well, I think it's I think it's valid because um, you're looking at their reputation within your community on prior projects and and their local presence in the community. I, I would never want to link it the way. Uh, what you're, what you're, what you're I know. Doing. I'm just getting nervous about that stuff. Yeah. It sounds like it's a lawsuit waiting to happen to me. The, I'm surprised. You know. I'm surprised it's been in here for this long, so yeah. <laughs> but maybe that's just me. So I'd like to see what Bob comes out with. I mean, I'm gonna want to blow my brains out when I read this, but I I'm gonna want to read it. So you want it? Why don't Why don't I? Why don't we work together like we did on this and get you a full version okay. of a of a purchasing ordinance for the next meeting, um, and 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 short of you blowing your well, that's why I don't have a gun. Um, we'll um, we'll go through it. You can look at you know the levels of uh, money expenditures, what's required when it's so much money, and and then we'll balance it against your charter to make sure we're not running about the charter. That sounds good. Okay. Could you eliminate at least maybe option two? It doesn't sound like anybody is really stuck on the flat rate. Yeah, I know, that, that's a giveaway of money. The, the, that's the one I do. Too. I would that's kind of the current program. We just kind of no further different. consideration of options. So, yeah, is everybody okay? Yeah, I'm too often. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that sounds great. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Weckel, I don't see, but Mr. McGuire, have you spoke to him? Uh, yes, uh, we were texting again just, just today. Um, so the curb and gutter work for the parking lot area is complete. Um, I believe that they were well working on the northeast lot. His cement contractor came back and finished a couple small little things by the dumpster that they had to do. They have the under uh, aggregate below for the millings placed on site. Roll them back, look at those millings, and give you know to see what they want at the base. And the low last thought process is they would be spreading out the millions around the lot and, and packing them in this week. We are going to want rolls going to have rolls do a density test on the materials once they're rolled and packed to be sure the density is proper before we allow it to Because for all intents and purposes, it's a village lot. The building, even though it's currently private property and a private lot, it's going to be handed over to the village as part of the original plan. So we want to make sure it's uh, the density of the aggregate below is proper. So right now they're looking to finish up that Wednesday, Thursday this week, weather dependent, and then pay towards the end of next week, the base coat. So either the end of this week or first of next week, then we'll have roll out to do the density testing to be sure that the compaction is proper for the uh, sub base. Um, and then the, the, he's working on some of the um, light pole conduits to connect the light pole position will be. Mm -hmm. One of the things he'd ask me about is, you know where the five spaces that are across from Burdick Street equipment right on East Burdick there, mm -hmm. where Detroit is <coughs> for the last two or three years now, it's going to move that hole. I haven't moved yet. Um, they said, so what about while they're paving? Can they just put that top coat in there? It'll be hash mark where that hole is in the way, but at least provide three, maybe four new spaces that are usable. Right now, with just the sub base in it. People aren't tending not to use it because it looks unfinished. Mm -hmm. It is. So uh, I said that would be fine. We could get that top coat in there when they do the other top coat, and it'd be hash marked where that hole is still in the way, like the way to be removed and placed elsewhere. Um, other than that, on the project, that's about all. I don't. Oh, the windows for 32. They're in. Okay, for the top floor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They've arrived. They're not in the building. Okay. They've arrived. They're, they're, they've been delivered. So, okay. and they did pour, if you did notice, on the north and south um, facades of the 32 building, mm -hmm. um, they did the cement work mm -hmm. at the end of the way and stuff, so that'll allow them to put the doors in now that that is finished. And maybe 
based on the landscaping as well. I don't know how much of that we're doing yet this fall. But that's correct. It's not a ton of landscaping there. I don't put anything on that south side. It's all cement, if I remember right. What about the Arbor Bites along Mr. Moser's? One of the last things would be done, but yes. This all um, maybe still no? Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't think so. It, he's obviously got his own brand new fence up. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Walker's fence came down and uh, the neighbor did come in and get a fence okay. permit and put up his own style of privacy fence along there. Okay. Uh, one of the issues we have as it goes over to that east wall there, east end <coughs> of the park, uh, parking lot, head towards Stanton. The neighboring trees over the fence are just so big and overgrown and they're kind of hanging over. If he puts in the trees there that were originally planned, they're just going to run them up and be running at each other. There was some talk about the, the, some other crab apple trees, I think, that Billy's put in around, like even on Stan Street. There's some other smaller ornamental type trees. He wondered if something like that would be better to put there. And I think we talked and we're okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, again, we don't want to put these larger ones that get so big they're just going to run right into the neighbor's trees over the fence. So we might downsize those trees to the more smaller, it doesn't grow so large. Mm -hmm. What else is left besides what you said? Anything? Lighting and landscaping, lighting. and then the top coat eventually. Lighting is well. Yeah, the lighting is expected to be done. Um, <coughs> the top the base coat, the top coat, the lighting. Landscaping, I wouldn't expect to be complete for sure. Um, some of it may be done. Do we know like when the parking lot will be usable then? Do we check for the lighting or? The lighting, I don't know. Okay. Part of it is we're gonna need to <coughs> run wires over, but no. Mm -hmm. It'll be usable as far as parking service goes, even after the base boat is in. Yeah. And then hopefully it won't be too much longer than the top boat can go in as well. Okay. Will it be clear that it is usable parking? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I mean, it will be striped. Well, well, once the base coat or the top coat is in, yeah, it'll be straight soon thereafter. Um, and there's still enough time, I think, to get that all done. Um, yeah. One of the things that's working this week, there's a big pile of dirt over there that's going to be moved out from the hallway as well, too. Any other questions from council before we're done? Thank you. Okay. Crosswalk bid results. So I'm, I'm disappointed in where we're at. We only have the one bid, and, and part of that, well, the main reason for that is lack of exposure, I believe. Um, I've been working with Mitten and MidNet, and I don't know, I've got three calls from them, emails from them that their municipal specialist is going to call us and bid us for stuff and so we can put bids out. Mm -hmm. That's what never, they've never communicated or got with me. So I wasn't able to hit that wide an audience with it. Mm -hmm. um, the, the prices come in in the range of the engineer's estimate, which was higher than we all hoped. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think at this point, I, I would suggest that we uh, pass on it, take another run at it next spring. By then, I should have the, the bid net thing squared away, hopefully, a lot sooner than that. And get a better, um, you know, response of, of bidders. Um, Birmingham Seal Code is, as you'll see, coming up. The recommended contractor for the uh, southeast quadrant place making concrete removal and replacement. Uh, they're already going to be fighting some of the weather for that, and that's a larger project. I think trying to sh shoehorn these in it's, at this time of the year, it's dark early, things like that. I think mm -hmm. all signs are pointing to let's. To Might as well wait to try to get better. Yeah. Can I just clarify if I'm reading this correctly? So for the area one is the one on Verdict, is that right? Or uh, let's see. I looked at that other day and like you had it. Yes, I believe it's, I believe that was the perfect one. He, uh, somewhere else it's noted. It was on the sheet, I think, from Sheriff Engineering's Mike. Okay. So if we assume that is, then that one would be the 17-8 number, mm -hmm. and then say the one about the school is the 15. Yes. And then he's saying if you if you give them both of them, they would be the 25,400. 
Yeah. Because of the immobilization just, twist. Okay. Just yeah, when you, just when you predicted that there would be a decrease. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you go from 33 from 25 to 33. Uh, 33 is pretty good. Part of it, you know, they mobilize and then the, the, the give them a break safety or whatever they use for the tracks. Yeah. You know, barricades and stuff. They have to come out two different locations, two different times as well. Mm -hmm. Then the strength can sign and find others. So if they don't do that, I think we don't do that. Okay. Right. Because they can do it cheaper. Yeah. <coughs> so even even if we move this, you learn that right. doing them together mm -hmm. should result in a significant. Can you remind me what our original projected cost was for the um, Twelve to thirteen is what I had using numbers off our verdict street. Uh, what's the verdict project? Again, mm -hmm. those are larger. Projects with the quantities, remove and replace that block, and things like that, curb and gutter stuff, were much smaller because it was a large project. So I knew I was a little low, and I didn't have any, I didn't have any of the signings and stuff in for that either. So you could have easily added a couple thousand more for that. So I would, I would have been around 15, let's say, but they're coming in at 25. Didn't we? The, the previous engineer's estimate was around 50K, if okay, I remember correctly, if I'm going off memory. Yeah. Um, so this is. They ended up reducing it almost half just by the estimates and then from this yeah. bid. So it seems like it's a lot more reasonable than what we were originally thinking, but at the same time too, it makes more sense to push it off to the spring. Yeah. Um, and part of the reason the engineer's estimate, even he came back with a different one on this, because we went out and I had um, the local surveyor did the topographical survey for this, kind of scaled back the scope a little bit here too, so that helped yeah. change to some degree. We saved some money on the total survey because we could get look quicker and cheaper. Um, and then Sharp Engineering provided the support <laughs> instead. So we saved a little bit of money on the front end, got the design done now. Mm -hmm. Can you remind me why we were <coughs> Was this a resident request? Was it a council request? Yes. Council. Oh. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get back from. Yeah. And it's just general. Is it my kids going to school? Is it because this one of the this is the actual school? The, the yeah. one, yeah, across from uh, Oxford Elementary there, the south end, where there, a lot of kids cut through the back of the church down off uh, Hubby and stuff, and then they they you know, Mike's or somebody from the police department is down there every day, and there's quite a flow of kids coming out of there, and they they just cross willy nilly, and and even the principal down there, we met with him guys it was a year ago, it was snowing that day, so. Mm -hmm. um, they had some concerns about the kids just crossing wherever, and it would be nice to funnel them to a spot that it's safer, it's marked, there's no markings. So that was part of that concern down there, which from the school, I would say equally as much as anybody else. And this other one here was more just anecdotal people, Kelsey, uh, Allison Bowles, and others. There's a lot you can of people that cross right there. there. The foot traffic has doubled this year alone. If we accepted this, would it get, this just as it is, if we accepted this, would it get done? This year, I believe so. They they said that they can do it again. The, the weather you can the, the, the asphalt work is going to run into a, a stop, right? It, you can pour concrete in December if it's forty degrees out. So I I and I fully understand that maybe um it, I might not be on the side you know, like like y'all may completely disagree with me, but um because it's a school because it's it's a lot of traffic that we're talking about. And um, I mean, I would say, how much money difference are we talking about? It's just a school year. I would, I would say accept this as is and get the job done with this now. But so you're waiting at, what, what, what's the potential savings by waiting next year, I guess is your point, right? Yeah. So it's good to for, are we gonna get done for 23 next year instead of 25 this year? Right, right. And this and is the school be, crossing and we're right. gonna go home That's a valid point, here. that's a good point. As much as I hate this project, I agree with Lori, mm -hmm. nothing's gonna get cheaper in April. Right. Nothing gets cheaper yeah. ever. Mm -hmm. I think the 25 is a great price considering what we thought we were gonna get. And just, I keep looking to say this, get it done. <laughs> I will, I will also say that um, having daughters that go to both schools and knowing what happens, um, what happens is people drop their kids off at DA mm -hmm. and then they walk over, right? Mm -hmm. you, you've probably seen me do the same yeah. multiple times. 
And I think like right there, when you really watch our, our wonderful police officers ushering these this seven, eight, nine year old across the street, I don't think we can really um, argue with this price given the value that we're gonna get out of it now. Um, and then also kind of will slow people down. So I think this is a, I think this is a decent price and it's well over half off of what we were thinking before, so. I can't argue those points, they're all great points. My, I just feel responsible to provide you better numbers if I can, mm -hmm. but that's not really the most important point. Um, I, I'm leaning that way as well, but Joe, I mean, realistically, how much savings do you think there would be if we did wait? 10%? Uh, or none. Or none. I mean, maximum, I'm thinking, you know, you might get it down for 10% less. I think. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the bid from Birmingham Seal Coat for doing both crosswalks, $25,433, and um, request that it be done ASAP. Second. Motion by Borja, seconded by Nicosia. Any discussion further? I just want to say, over, oh, trick or treat. The kids are going to be trick or treating in this area. I just want to make sure we got the area all closed up. And I'm not saying get done by then. I, I want yeah, to say, yeah, 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 If they're to it at that point, that would definitely be uh, duly noted. But I think it's a good chance that they'll be doing it in November. Like, they're not even going to start the southeast quadrant over there until first of November or thereabouts because Perfect. some other work going on. So they'll probably coordinate it with that work. Yeah. Because they had equipment in town and people in town. Hey, you don't want to tell them to give us an even further discount. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, roll call vote, please. Orjo? Yes. Nicosia? Yes. Kemp? Yes. Palmer? No. Cook? Yes. <laughs> I just have to be consistent. <laughs> Southeast Quadrant Place Making Kind Removal and Replace of Bit Award recommendation from the DDA, right? Yep. Uh, and this one was get out there. Uh, there was plans for plan rooms out there. Rome had a few people contact them. Um, that didn't end up not bidding because they were hoping to do the work next year and of course it was a must be done this year project so we only have two bidders one of them was just to pay the money under just in case as you can see on the bid tab so the recommendation from Roe is to award the project to a Birmingham Silco for the 93,290 which is in his he'll even note 11% lower than the engineer's estimate so that was the recommendation from Roe and I think we all were there, uh, Pete was there, I think Rob was there too at the, uh, no, something else from, oh, it was you and Cameron and yeah. Pete from the DDA when we did the bid tab. So we had a good conversation all about it, about the project in general. Okay, so we'll move to approve the Downtown Development Authority's recommendation and award the project for the Southeast Quadrant. Please make a concrete removal and replacement the Ham Seal Coat for $93,209.50. Uh, uh, Joe, this might be a tough one for you. How much did we budget for this again? This oh, is more of the DVD. That's us. Oh, that's us. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You didn't budget anything. Uh, we, <laughs> we took out a couple of trees. Okay, yeah. We took out a couple of oh, sure, yeah. okay, yeah. trees. So did we? I know. No, we took down branches, Joe. Yeah. I took down trees. Great. Yeah. 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 So to answer your question, almost nothing. <laughs> is what we budgeted. I should have Yeah, thanks, Jacob. Appreciate it. Oh, any other discussion? Mm -hmm. Okay, none of the local Yes. <laughs> Bourgeois? Yes. Nicosia? Yes. Kemp? Yes. And Cook? Yes. Okay. Okay, maybe it doesn't clarify. So, 
when they sign contracts, working on a lease property, the contract goes to us. We, uh, you know, they sign too, but you know, we have to be involved with our property. We help the oversight. EBW helps with certain things here and there. And, uh, yeah, it's a group effort, except for financially, and this one. <laughs> Um, next is the 18 West Verdict Street demo inspection quotes. And so 18 West Verdict, for those who don't remember, the old township building on the uh, east end of our building, or yeah, east end, that's been vacant for, I don't know, 100 years. Um, it's had some issues. And anytime you get to go get a demolition permit, anything like that, the state, you have to do your niche app, which is the natural emission standard that has your air pollution, it's like asbestos. So I figured, even if we were going to use CBD money in the next couple of years, they want this stuff done in advance, and you don't, you can't use CBD money to fund it. So you might as well have a fund on the property. Mm -hmm. That's why I thought, why not at least reach out, get that inspection, get it done now. It's only a couple thousand dollars. We'll have it on the shelf. If we get to the point in a year or two or three, we're ready to pull the trigger and spend the money to demolish that as part of our overall plan here. This will be done and on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And kind of thing. I didn't write up. Uh, it was just basically, I don't remember the number, really. 2850 on the one, mm -hmm. and 2275 on the other. If I reached out to three different ones, the other guy was intending to send me one. Uh, but I've worked with uh, Nova, right now, they've been around for a long time. <laughs> yep. uh, but they're a little bit higher than this uh, environmental one, or one environmental. Uh, but I know a friend of mine is an asbestos abatement contractor. He's the one who gave me their uh, information. He had just recently received a uh, survey from them for bid takeoff. Um, so I have no reason to believe that they wouldn't be adequate. But so you see the slight difference um, $2,275, $2,275 for one environmental and $2,850. Now, part of the deal is it, it can fluctuate. Only because they're based on what they might see in the building as far as piping and floor tiling and roof flashing and things like that. When you get in the building, if they see a few other things that come up, they might take a couple more samples, and then those samples are then analyzed at the lab. So you have a couple more sample pieces. Their, their cost really doesn't change much as the amount of samples that you have to contend with. So the difference between the two bids is just. How uh, they calculated what they might find? Yeah, the one guy's got uh, 50 samples there, and uh, it's a reasonable guess. Okay. Yeah, he's got 50 samples on that one too. Um, so they're both looking at about 50 samples each. Oh, this is the quote to quote it. This is the quote for them to come in the building and inspect the building. Okay. And I'm the 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 is it? No, I just couldn't figure out why it was so cheap to knock down the building. No, this is in the documentation so you so know what's in it. So confused. That's amazing. I worked in the environmental business for about a year, and I believe there is a small amount of this thing in the basement. Lots of piping. So, so you, we may have to do a small abatement project over there to remove a couple of these okay. items mm -hmm. uh, before, prior to demo. We so, so, think it's fragile. Yeah, it's quite fragile. Um, there is a couple of things I believe that are highly suspect that will be more likely as best as it will be a small abatement project. Again, you might spend five grand being rid of that. So you'll have it. Once you get to the point, it's a multi step process. You can't just pull the bull over and not the building over anymore. So each of them, each of them are estimating about 50 samples. Mm -hmm. So it looks like a lot of the one environmental is just less than the other comparable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're pretty close. Again, I've never, never heard or dealt with one right now, but I've been out of that business for 15 years, so. But they're, they're, they're okay. yeah. They're fine. Yeah, they have a lot of, they're, they're like to see them all in place there. Okay, so it's, it's right past yeah. the other side of this room. Good. Yeah. Insurance, terms, limitation. I'm going to do the touch box. No, the library. The village offices are currently in the old library. Okay, okay. The township offices at the east side. And the old village offices at the police departments on the west side. I'll have to do a tour. Someday. 
It's great over there. Kelly's over there. Yeah, I think we're over there. That's just masks. Kelly, wait. Too much. Yeah. I'll go to accept the bid of one environmental and the amount of $2,275 for the uh, asbestos. Pre demolition and inspection. Pre demolition inspection. This is a board. Motion made by Cook. I'll call that cap. And then any further discussion? Hearing none, a roll call vote. Nicosia? Support. Bourgeois? Yes. Ahmed? Yes. Cook? Yes. Cap? Yes. The village parking lot design engineering proposal for the road. Okay, if you call, um, we, we did budget for this. We talked about it pretty much uh, in our budget workshop this spring. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the cost to do this upfront work is a little less than we have budgeted. I think it is 60000 budgeted, and this throw it at 37900 to do the um, full site design and then phase one construction plans. The construction plans do go to phases that come later, but this will be the full, full site total survey, full site design and then uh, construction plans and cost of bidding specs and the bidding assistance for the first phase, which would be the, the wing, the Hudson wing, so to speak, over there. One other thing we've gone back and forth with is our the underwater uh, stormwater retention and detention. Mm -hmm. uh, Rogue recently did a calculation in the last week or two, and it does fall below the threshold of the water management commission. It's one acre, it's less than an acre. Um, so that gives us a little more options. We don't have to get quite as in depth on the water retention construction. Mm -hmm. <coughs> similarly, how we have in the past year, we have we already been expanded and, and take care of and allow for and provide for additional water storage of the lot. To address that. The one if you if ever buy after a heavy rain, the one on, on the east side of the building out here does it's leach basin with no pipes coming out of it, it does fill up and then come out and uh, for maybe twenty foot around and then the next day it's gone. So we want to address those, make sure we have adequate underground water retention. Your defense. And I apologize, Joe. You said you budgeted 50,000. 60, I think. 60. February 379. Yeah, well, the, the 60,000 I did was because I think it was going to be designed all three phases. This one's going to be design work on the first phase. Mm -hmm. Full design of the entire area, but then the engineering part, phase one construction plans. Construction plans are over this phase. So next budget year we'll have a little more. But the full mm -hmm. survey of the whole area as far as the topographic survey, so they can then design the whole site. And then this would be something that they would work on the design over the winter and get it out to bid early in the winter, early spring for construction next summer. So do we have to, I basically would we have to do construction administration, pay them additionally for construction yes. administration in phase two and three? Yes. Okay. And phase one, two, the construction administration on sites, uh, staking, surveying, and on site construction management is not included in this. This is the permanent work only. So I think I might, I'd have to back a look at how we had it broken down in our um, workshop there. There's always the some additional costs that. Going forward, each phase will have those costs. And I had a spreadsheet. Actually, we sent it out to everybody. He had it broken down by each phase for the construction, on site inspection, and stuff. If you recall, all total, all three phases of the road was over 800,000 mm -hmm. This is the smallest phase. And this one makes the most sense, I think. Because, you know, the, the new parking lot or the new street sidewalk, and then we'll move inward from there. Row is pretty high on um, the crosswalk design, right? Mm -hmm. So it just makes me wonder if we sent this out for to all their engineering service consultants, could we get the price down? Because if you look at it, not like discount anything that they are doing, but it's to me, I see the value in the survey. The full site design, they're designing a parking lot, but they're not going to do any of There's a lot of other things that they're subcontracting, like the geotech work, the soil borings, the um, you know, stormwater site detention they're not doing, none of that's included. And this is only one part of it that we had budgeted at 60000 so I just think we're going to be over budget unless we get this down. Is that 
So, not exactly. I was saying because when he said that, that's what I said to Paul. You have nerve saying you're not even in stormwater detention design. Well, he means like a full blown underground design system. Mm -hmm. But we need to address what we don't have to, so we can handle it like we always have, and that's going to be included as far as. Oh. Uh, yes. So we don't. But that's the way it was worded on there. I'm like, I even told him, like, well, no, we are going to deal with the stormwater design. We have, we like to do it the way we've done it in the other parking lots and stuff where we have our open bottom um, drain structure, 20 foot of pipe going out either way, you know, to, to hold water capacity. So that will be designed as part of it. Okay. But it's not the full blown $85,000 underground retention um, system that we need to install because it's over that threshold. Gotcha. Okay. Um, How long has it been since we used or considered it to coach when we found the road? It's been a, like, I don't so, think we ever have since I... When I first came here, Ro was here for, I don't know, 20 years? Mm -hmm. Something like that, a long time. And then there was no way the Prowl was here for, I think when Joey Dunn was here for maybe 10, 12 years, I'm not sure, the whole time period or not. About 10. And so when I came here, and I was talking to Don, and all of our blueprints, all of our water prints, all of these things had Ro's name or on them. And I worked with Ro, I was very fond of Ro, and Don was very fond of them. So <coughs> we brought them back. Mm -hmm. And that would have been probably 2018. Um, they are bigger firms, so they bigger overhead. But in certain cases, you really need that. Now, the sidewalk, crosswalk, that was a good point uh, brought up. Smaller design, Kennedy Engineering did the, the topo survey, Sharp did a real simple design. He almost said, you could just build it right off the end of that spec. You don't need the design. So I want something to hold it to. So it was much smaller scale. Um, we've we're utilizing Royal the DA for the Northeast Park in that project, and I think they've helped tremendously when it comes to pay ups. When, the, when the, there's a change order, which there almost always is, mm -hmm. if there isn't, it's a shock. Mm -hmm. They're very adept at that, comparing the numbers and stuff. Not say others can't, but um, I, I, in that case, it's really good to have them on there and have their on site guy on there. Um, I don't, I'm, I know the other local person we use. Could probably do the same, but I'm just not. <laughs> That's my real Yeah. I think of it kind of like, you know, they, you get your car insurance and you get half, you, you just keep paying it and you stay with the same company and they mm -hmm. say you should quote, get these things checked out because when you do quote, you find out you're spending $500 in every other company. Um, and, and I know this is one of the companies that I only had. I've only had familiarity with Will, and the other company that we've used, um, your group that I'm planning, okay. yes, is the other group that I know of that we use the same every time, and I just wonder, I just feel like there's got to be, we have to do some sort of auditing, some sort of, um, some sort of, Price comparison? Yeah, some quoting and some consideration. And while I do agree with when you've got something that works, you don't want to, you don't want to go with something and put yourself in a worse situation. But I also think that you have to quote to get the other one to, to know your and, and I understand that, and we did that. Um, matter of fact, we didn't sell these quad row couldn't get there in time as we needed. It was a time crunch to get that topo survey done over the Southeast Quad behind the toys and stuff. Uh, so we have, I pivoted with Kennedy and, and we saved a little bit of money on that too. Um, so uh, that's, that's a valid point. If you go back to what we discussed earlier about the uh, purchasing and your professional services are like that mm -hmm. for a reason. You don't want to change your attorney every couple of years because there's continuity, there's history, things like that. You don't want to change your auditors every now. We have changed a couple times, but that's for the better. Uh, I think we're in a good spot. I just can keep the same auditor for years once you have them. But yeah, we have gone around the row twice in the last few months and, and for total surveys to definitely save some money. We could possibly do that in this one too. Could we have like as needed contractors? So like at WRC, we have five to ten consultant engineers. So at any point, we could pick any of them and say, give me your price on this. And that way we always know that, you know, we can pick based on their skill, their expertise, we can pick based on their price, who's available, size of the job, the size of the job <coughs> who's on it. So I'm wondering if we just start looking for a couple others to kind of on 
Yeah. And so we don't have to go out the bid, but like we have them special service contracts. So. Maybe it's where we find, you know, we really like to go for everything like the asphalt, but when we're going into, you know, we need a certain quotes, like, I, I, you know, we've we seen <coughs> mistakes in the, you know, it's been a while, but, the, you know, when I first came in, we were seeing mistakes on considering ordinance and, 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 I mean, it was real, me and this one but, um, so there's just there's just things like that that I think we don't know I'm not necessarily saying we have to do it for this one, but um, if everybody's comfortable with this for this job, I'm I'm more than happy with that. I just think that within the next however long, we should be considering opening that up and just evaluating. I think it doesn't hurt to get pricing at the same time too, looking at the overall magnitude of the project, 800K, it's 4% of the overall cost. So I think it's actually a pretty fair price, especially considering the fact that the same exact cost was almost there for two crosswalks before. And I think this is a much more substantial project. So I think for them, this falls in more in the line of what I would think we would want to spend. How much are you going to save? I'm looking at this from, we, uh, I work for an uh, engineering uh, company that does construction. For 40 grand to take on a project like this is, it would be pretty tough. Like it's probably bottom of the barrel pricing on this. I would think. Um, so considering the scope too, yeah, okay. yeah, considering the scope. So I mean, like in my, in my mind, I don't think it's going to hurt to get additional pricing. I also think that um, it's it, if if we're comfortable with this amount, it's not out of the realm of what it's going to cost them to do it. You can also like category and build your arsenal, like we're suggesting. Nice. It's, sometimes it's good for a community to have. Uh, a go-to checklist for surveys. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to go to the road for survey work. Um, they're normally high. That's the one area we found. So, you, so you, run off, you run off to the mm -hmm. Kennedys of the world on their survey work. So there are categories you can build arsenals of go-to companies, leaving, of course, your prime, you know, some of your bigger primary work is suggested to the caliber of road. Yeah, I like that. I mean, like I say, I'm. I'm not, I don't want to pick apart this job in specific. I mean, this is something we've been talking about for a while now, too. And he said that we're doing a lot of this type of work in the village and will be in the future as well. So I, I didn't mean to pick this one apart I, I will look, though, but I like the idea of just evaluating. Uh, I will look at um, killing out the topo survey part, though, and, and see what that is. Because that's where there's some savings. Kennedy is local. He's very quick mm -hmm. and very reasonable. Very good, too. Yes, yeah. and very good. Um, when I did go to Sheriff Engineering, north side of town, right next to Kennedy, about the crosswalks, he's a little queasy coming into someone else's area, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but see, there's a lot of people cherry picking him when in his areas, and so it's a little, but I told him that my direction was to, to reach out and find an alternative and for us to try to get that more reasonable for us to want to move forward with it. And, and so he did so, because he was asked to do so, and it saved us some money. And then on the, on the DBA project, same thing, it was a scheduling on the front end was an issue where they couldn't get it for 10 days, where Kennedy was there in two. And so that helped get us ahead of the game, because we were going to be fighting the schedule with the weather and the ball coming out of So I, I can definitely look at that portion of it, especially, because that's the part that's easiest for them to outsource to those people. We can outsource and then plug it in. So it would be kind of like a proven. Yes, yeah, so if they had 7250 for the Topo survey, we That's might get that done. Job. We could get it done for, for half that, or you know, I mean, it's pretty. Uh, you could save a couple thousand there. Mm -hmm. Now it's a little tough, and if we had a couple bumps, Sir Kennedy had come back out on the BBA project over there, because you know, one engineer affects all these certain points, and they want done. So that's what they're used to, and someone else only does 80 percent of those points on a Topo map. So now they've come back, and you know, it's like. Have someone come on into your home, move all your furniture on, tape everything up, and the painter show up. Yeah. Paint is not going to be with their paint job. So you do have a little bit of that, but that's, they can be worked out. 
But when it comes down to engineering it and doing the bed boats and the contracts and uh, things like that, I mean, it, it's a large project, a multi-phase project. Yeah. Right. Thank you. So if we go with row now, do we have to? We have to go with them through the whole project for phase two and three. Or? You don't have to, but they will. They will provide us the the design. Not that the phase one construction plans would be done, but not phase two and phase three construction plans wouldn't be done. Uh, but the full site design would be done, like the site, like the site mm -hmm. plan, so to speak, okay. with the angle elevations and everything on it. Not the construction plans. Mm -hmm. That could be phase two could be done differently. Mm -hmm. This is the smallest phase, okay. the easiest phase. As we come around the building here, we're talking about removing the sidewalks and connecting down and stuff, and then connecting them into the underground. Uh, water retention system, storm water system. But to get something done, we thought we'd tackle the smaller base first. Okay. Any further discussion or motion by council? Or do you want to wait and see if we can get You could prove that way through two at that amount. Mm -hmm. With the option to outsource the topo survey if, if necessary, mm -hmm. and available. If there's, if there's significant savings, which I, you know, the seventy thousand two hundred fifty dollars on there, so your savings could be three grand maybe. Mm -hmm. um, three grand, you get two cooks in the kitchen. Right. Mm -hmm. Or you just go forward and do this. Mm -hmm. That that's the that's the only flying point because, like I said, when you have. Whatever, two books, the or somebody doing something else, and you have to pick up the middle of the screen about their work. Right, yeah, I do understand that. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the design engineering service proposal presented by Rural Engineering with an amount not to exceed $37,000. Support. Motion made by Hummel, second by any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Kemp? Yes. Nicosia? Yes. Orjo? Yes. Helmut? Yes. Um, Cook? Yes. Motion carries. I love when Terry just can't come up with that last name. <laughs> <laughs> I lost my place. <laughs> oh. I did have on the back of the page. There was the book we had that was in the spring. It's awful small on this page. You recall it was a large print when we were in our workshop, but it talks about the different pages and stuff. Oh, yeah. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, I'm going to need it. Yeah. I'll take your problem. Yeah. Uh, if, if you go back to your May uh, large size paper, we have it on our portal. Send it to you electronically. Thank you. Hi, Nancy. How are we introducing hours? Oh, I don't know her stuff. Uh, yeah. Worst conversation ever. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So in the past, we've done 6 to 7.30, right? I think so. That's what we remember that time, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's what it's been the last. The chief says yes, let's not change it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> don't we just wait for the sirens? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go, bro. And then go get Jonah. Yeah. We just want to make sure it's a small township. Yeah. yeah. Six to seven thirty. Mm -hmm. So, everybody agrees. Both of them make the trees hours six to seven thirty. Four. Hi, that's October thirty first. Good point. I wasn't there to say hi. Hi. Did we catch that? Okay. Oh. Sorry, Barbara, we didn't catch any of that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Halloween trick between hours on October thirty first, six to seven thirty. Mm -hmm. I did. No. I support it. Most. I'll support it. We also there we go. We also have group support. support. Oh my goodness! I think I made a pick one. Are you going to get that? Yeah. Oh, pick one. Pick one. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do it on the Sundays. All right. Ten. We have none. Being removed from consent agenda. Eleven. Public comment. Anyone for the public? Okay. Committee um, reports. No. Oh. Um. Something happened. Um, <laughs> I can't remember what it was. 
No, it's about the it's about the transportation and uh, <laughs> um, no, the transportation, the new RTA. Oh, um, the college. The college. Come back to me. I'll come back to you. Pass. Planning commission. The planning commission has not that. The Gable Commission did me um, Terry's going to be visiting all communities at public meetings. Um, they're looking for the managers, local community leaders, to support a couple of house bills. One will, it has to do with charging streaming services for using our infrastructure. Right now we get money from at and we get money from Comcast. <coughs> we don't get money from everybody else who's using the same infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So they want to be able to charge these streaming services for using that. Um, we're also having trouble with one of the communities we're trying to collect their franchise fees. Um, we're looking at replacing some of our equipment I uh, went have a list with three bit raises for all the larger equipment, some cameras. Um, the computers are desperately old. They're, they're practically working on What were those Pentiums? Yeah. What were the things you had in the early 80s? We used to be at the village. Um, the Commodore, Scott 64. Um, <laughs> So they've got a lot going on right now. They are very, they spoke very highly of the DDA and the tailgate party, and how that went out to the work together. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nice to hear. Great. Thank you. DDA. Yeah. 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 I'll make it short, I promise. So we can, I'll go home. Um, so, some of the longer things. So the TIF plan will be coming to you guys starting in November. A couple of different meetings that we'll look for your direction on. We did hire McKenna with an Oakland County grant that we received. Um, so Mario is actually helping us through the whole process. Uh, we met with him today in org committee. Uh, Pete was there and Ron and myself. So. Um, we have our work cut out for us, don't we, Pete? Um, but it's going to be great, and we're looking for final approval in March. Um, so Joe and I will get everything to you. Um, Is your TIF plan due or your development plan? TIF. Just TIF? Yeah. yeah. Um, the parking lot <coughs> is doing really great behind that, so I don't know if you guys have been back there to see it. We're working through a couple additional things, but... That was, um, you know, three hundred thousand dollars of the DDA budget. So we're excited to have that done and have that um, for the community scarecrow fest. Thank you for those of you that I saw. It was a huge success. Um, the most people we've ever seen out. We estimated about twenty four hundred. So it was really, really nice to see. And the most businesses ever involved with anything to the, today with us. Um, which is night, I'll be here for you know, 10 days away. And uh, this will actually be the most businesses that we've had involved for which is night. It's also a stronger together event. So the trolley will be running and Lake Warren will be hosting theirs as well. Uh, let's see, we will thank you for approving um, or recommending that BSI take on the Victoria's behind that area. It's a really quick timeline. So the two tiered structure that Les Thomas is putting in will be done by October 31st, which means BSI can get started November 1st. And we have a two week deadline for that with November 15th being the end of work. So we're excited to have another community space that we can offer out, but it is, it's a lot in a small amount of time, but they think they can do it. So we're lucky to have them. Um, we have a general promotions map that we've been working on almost the past year now to get it all together, but it's a complete uh, map trifold of our district. And it has all of the retail, all of your restaurants in there, service businesses, and it will be housed all over Oakland County. So, and then also available at the village and township and things like that. So we're excited to finally be getting those printed 
and it has a lot of information on there about our downtown. Uh, we're looking to run a pilot trolley program uh, to run on specific dates to actually our community. So we're looking at Waterstone and we're looking at a couple of our other um, larger neighborhoods around town and actually running the trolley specifically to those places and bringing people downtown. So trying just some different things to shake it up a bit, but these will be in addition to our Friday and Saturday night that we're already running. Um, the lights on the four corners are done. They will be lit probably starting next week, um, but they look great. So thank you for approving that on the museum. And we're already in Christmas planning for lights. I had to wear Christmas lights this week, and I'm like, where did this year go? So um, it's been busy and wonderful, and our businesses are doing great. So it's really awesome to see. So thank you guys always. Yeah, thank you, it's an awful job. Um, nice to meet you. Yep. Right. So we we uh, we met this month. We met here. Um, they do have bottle wrap going on out back. Again, it's a fundraiser with bottle wrap and the Holly Trail Clean Proceeds. Um, Justin Schilling, one of our, our young folks killed in the tragedy, his mom was at our last meeting. She's inquiring about putting some kind of memorial along Holly Trail, and they're up to over that. Um, Myself, Matt Piper, and uh, Lynn Moran, trail manager, are working together with, with her. Because he lived up in this neck of the woods, uh, First Street near Chief, um, she wanted something up in this area. She wasn't exactly sure. We're kind of leaning towards perhaps by the Butterfly Garden, which is by the um, uh, White Pine Coffee Roasters. There's some area there that's the NAR property, and there's a little sliver behind the parking space that's Philly property. We're not exactly sure, but it may just be up, up be a rock with a plaque. She wasn't exactly sure if she's looking at a couple different options, but probably trail was. Entertain her and then support that effort from her. So, work, work in progress. Um, the painting for our, our the ugly building out back is mm -hmm. done. If you haven't seen it in the daylight, mm -hmm. it looks mm -hmm. like it's a new building. Really mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. um, so, very happy about that. Now we get that parking lot over around it to look better, we'll be in good shape. Yeah. Um, and that's about it. Can I update on the trees? Oh, yes. I did meet with the gentleman. Um, look at the trees. Don and I are going to look at a spot. We don't want to go, initially I thought maybe near the playground area, but one thing Don has told me years ago when that was kind of, it was filled in, there's a lot of fill material underneath the ground. We're afraid of hitting, whether it's rock or concrete, whatever down below there. So we're leaning more towards the south side of the fat area, maybe that, along that area. Um, we just have to nail that down. We're trying to do that yet this week, you know, where we can put them. Um, I told the gentleman from the Eileen tree farm there, Probably by the middle of November is when we want them in the ground. Thank you. And they're still going to be maples. Yeah, but I'm going to dig up no, it's my house, house and I'm going to bring you an oak tree. <laughs> I'm going to bring you a Cadelpha seed. No, I don't want those. My will, my wife kind of will. Oh, I want to go get it. Uh, yeah, we had our audit um, wrapped up really quick. They were here for half a day last Thursday, and it's been pretty quiet. So I think we finally have um, cleaned up all of our past issues, and mm -hmm. um, they should be presenting in December. Great. The financial statements. Thank you. Mr. Davis? I'm good. Thank you. Um, Chief? Uh, Police Department Southie, we're in uh, training mode right now, and uh, officers are doing good, and we're planning for all the holiday events. Mm -hmm. Looking awesome. forward to it. Chief Majestic, anything? All right, council comments? Roger? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Transportation. Yes, exactly. Um, so the county kind of asked our director going to other communities that they want NOTA to be covering. Uh, NOTA isn't necessarily in the end. And um, so that kind of caused some issues because maybe don't want a different solution. And so um, that was a big thing is uh, we're working on right now is trying to tell the county that they need to take more ownership and outreach with these other community 
days. So that's been a big thing that we're working on, as well as the parking lot and um, Nellich. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's Nova. Uh, everything else, you know, everybody has a good and safe Halloween. And um, I might not be here next month, just so you know. Other than that, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate <laughs> it. Happy Halloween, trick or treat. Get the costume on, say trick or treat. I'll give you a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. I don't care how old you are or anything. You'll be 50 with a martini in your hand. I'm giving you a Reese's. But you gotta say trick or treat. Where, where's that? 47 Dayton. <laughs> Dayton, maple, lots of maple trees. Don't look at them. Oh, oh, the 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 Get the dogs in the costume, is that good enough? Absolutely. All right, she got her <laughs> meat today. Um, I think uh, uh, off topic uh, today, I just want to make sure that I give a shout out to um, Lighthouse of Pontiac. My, uh, daughters are doing a food drive, uh, and it really helps um, neat folks who uh, really are, are less fortunate than us. And, and with all of the with all of the holidays coming up, um, our goal is to raise uh, two tons of food for the lighthouse in Pontiac, and to work with them. Um, so if anyone's interested, feel free. Um, we're always looking for hands to help sort and um, collect food uh, just for, for folks that uh, need the help during during these times and, and we're so blessed so um, if you'd like. Drop spot? Uh, we will, we can, there is a drop spot at my house or I can bring up uh, boxes as well. I thought you were eating well this month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Scarecrow, lots of fun, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I have almost every hand. Um, building up back, it's beautiful. Uh, I think that was a huge, uh, the curb appeal is definitely helped. <laughs> but overall, great meeting you guys. Thank you. I'll just quickly mention that um, there's potential water affordability bill package on the horizon that would impact the village. We'd be required to charge uh, $2 to every property in the village to the pool sleep water fund would then be allocated back out to fund local municipalities gap payment and providing affordable water bills to eligible households. I know enough about it, I wrote a whole lot of it. Uh, working with Senator Chang, so it's something that um, could potentially pass this year, if not next by the summer. So. I think it would be a good solution. There's um, affordability challenges in every aspect of you know many people's lives, and the energy sector has something in place already. You know, there's something for food, there's something for everything except for water. And as we all learn, especially with with the pandemic, water is extremely essential to public health and safety. So that's my um, little bit of a plug, but also just letting council and everybody know that that's probably coming our way. So I see it potentially being a good chance at passing the legislature and getting signed. So more to come on that. Would that be a line item on water bills? Or yes, separate line item. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Other than that, um, yep, I think that, yeah, thanks for everybody. Thank you so much, Gloria, for bringing up the, um, just moving forward with the crosswalks. I thought that was really smart, so appreciate that. And that is all my comments. If there are no other comments, Move to adjourn at 8.58. We're keeping in line with our 9 o'clock deadline. Four. 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 Four.